Hello everybody, welcome back to Conspiracy Grotesco, The Conspiracy Against the Human Race by Thomas Ligotti and Teatro Grotesco by Thomas Ligotti. But today, we're doing The Conspiracy Against the Human Race by Thomas Ligotti. Um, today we're going over four sections, self-hypnosis, cosmophobia, PES 1 and PES 2, maybe I'll say the ism, I don't know, just to see if that's what made YouTube shit on me. <clears throat> this was a really interesting bit, if you're following along, um, and if not, Here's me going and telling you what it said. In a very watered-down version with me not quoting correctly and just kind of paraphrasing the way I see fit. So, um, the first bit, self-hypnosis. I was, like, just going into it, I was like, what the fuck is this going to be about? Um, but it is really kind of like what the world's like because basically if if being alive was all right if um consciousness was all right if all this stuff was all right we wouldn't have like self-help books we wouldn't have books trying to teach you the meaning of life. We wouldn't have books trying to make you feel better about day-to-day -day life. And since probably the early 1900s, there have been tons of books, whether it be books on self-hypnosis or books on um, just being happy, books on how to, you know... I don't know, even the fucking secret for fuck's sake. Like, these books wouldn't exist. And the people who are buying those books are the people who are inside feeling, man, life is not all right. What's the meaning of life? People who have their shit together and never question these things never buy these books. And um, one of the things that it says in here... Um, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. God, my eyes are shit right now. If anyone doubts that felt meanings are imperative to our developing or maintaining a state of good feeling, just lay your eyes on the staggering number of books and therapies for a market of individuals who suffer from a deficiency of meaning either in a limited or localized variant. Like, I am satisfied that my life has meaning because I received an A on my calculus exam, or one that is macrocosmic in scope. I am satisfied that my life has meaning because God loves me. Um, like, there are tons of people who either say these things and then still feel like shit and then so go out and buy these books on how to tell themselves that shit's okay or they don't even have that and they need something to tell them that shit's okay or they go to a therapist or they go to this that or the other thing so the thought here is is that everyone deep down inside, has some feeling that everything's shit and that living is not all right. You know, there, there is some question to it. Um, so, and then it, the one thing that is amazing about this book, whether you believe what this book is shilling or not, it, like many other essays and stuff like that have references to so many other writers, so many other essays, so many other books that like 
it would take you probably your entire life to read all of the books that are in this book that he's talking about. It wouldn't take you your whole life because he obviously has read these and put them in there. But um, one of the things is about this guy named uh, Emil Kau, who wrote Self Mastery Through Consciousness Auto Suggestion or through conscious auto-suggestion in 1922. And he was like this, after the book came out, like this total celebrity. Celebrities loved him and wanted to hang out with him and all this shit. But um, he's best known for urging his believers to repeat this when they woke up every day. Day by day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. So it's like you're hypnotizing yourself you're telling yourself over and over again with these mantras or positive suggestions you're telling yourself these things so you don't feel the feeling that consciousness brings to you every day so you're trying to like push your consciousness down so you say these things so you never even think about them so that's Pretty cool. And then, um, was there anything else in this bit? Oh, another thing in here that was really good was that, um, and what was cracking me up about those mantras, it made me think of Seinfeld. Like, if you ever watch Seinfeld, and you remember George going, Serenity now! Like, that thing. Like, he was having to fucking tell himself something because he knew shit was fucked up. And so he, like, he would just start, like, he was yelling serenity now and, um, all that shit. But, um, one of the other things he was saying is that he thinks the word life doesn't have the right, um, connotations to it. So instead of saying like, what is the meaning of life? Like, we should be saying, what's the meaning of existence? Because you never would say that, oh, that person's in the prime of existence. You know, you would say that person's in the prime of their life or whatever like that. Um, then when we get into the uh, the cosmophobia section, which I honestly thought this was going to be a lot more scary. And I think I thought that way because of just, like, cosmic horror and the fact that he, Thomas Ligotti, is like a student of Lovecraft. I thought this was going to get dark as shit. Um, but it, it's not something to be that scared about. But um, the problem that is uh, brought up here is that we must either outsmart our consciousness or be thrown into its vortex of doleful factuality and suffer. Um so those are your basic two options for life. Um, and I don't think there was anything else in this section that I really, yeah, no, I didn't. There wasn't a whole lot that I wanted to touch on here and pessimism one. Um, the thing that really stands out, I'm actually going to talk about this on the next section. So let me move my notes down a little bit. Um, it talks about two things. One being, could pessimism be hereditary? And I was thinking about that a little bit. And um, I think it actually could be to an extent. Because my dad, like the piece of shit that he was, I think he thought of the world in a very pessimistic light. Um just as I felt the world in a very pessimistic light, but I never thought about pessimism before, you know? Um, see, the thing that really blows here is that when I went to college, your mom went to college. Um, when I went to college, I was a, I wanted to go to film school and my parents were like, you can't get a fucking job in film school. You're not going to, or you can't get a job you know, being a filmmaker, like that's too hard. You're not going to be able to do it. Go to college and blah, 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 blah. So I go to college and I start majoring in philosophy because I'm a douchebag and didn't understand that there is 
actually zero work you could get as a philosophy major other than teaching philosophy at a university because you can't really publish anything in philosophy unless you have the backing of a university. So basically, um, I went from a wanting to have a career that I actually could have made money at, that I actually did make a lot of money at without going to school, which is a topic for another day, to going to school with my parents' support to major in something that there was no way in hell I was ever going to get um, any money for. You know, it's like the fucking paradox, man. Um, but when I was, I think philosophy is wasted on the youth for fucking, for real. Because when I was in my philosophy class, uh, my teacher's name was Mahoney. I think his name was James Mahoney, I want to say. Um, and he was like just this like, cool, cool, soft-spoken old dude. And he would just talk to us and we would listen. And he, like, he's like, yeah, this weekend got together with a bunch of other philosophers. We sat around and had drinks and talked all night. And I'm like, huh. So that's what you do. And then the next weekend he would go, oh man, got together with all my philosopher friends. And we just had drinks and we talked all night. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's all this motherfucker does, right? And um, I never even realized what his own philosophy was. Like, we never talked about it. We would talk from, like, the beginnings of philosophy through... And um, I don't think I took enough courses to be able to get into um, some hard shit because all I thought philosophy was was arguing with people. So whatever he was trying to teach at that moment, I would just play the devil's advocate and take the opposite side and start arguing with him. And at first, I think he thought it was cute and kind of fun, but then I just never backed down. And, um, you know, this was just me being a dick, but th this, this has helped me my whole life. Whenever you talk to anybody about this shit and someone gives you some statement, because it's philosophy, it's a non-absolute, no matter what. So all you have to do is ask why. Why? Why is that? I don't know. Why? You know? And then, like, motherfuckers just want to pull their hair out. And that's kind of how I spent that semester in college, just asking this motherfucker why. And I feel like I totally fucked myself because... I don't know. You, you reach a certain age and you're just like... Man, if I would have known these things back then, you know, if I would have had this knowledge, this wisdom when I was this age, um, things would have been different. And they would have been different, you know? Um, shit, things would have been fucking way different. But you can't dwell on that shit, but at the same time, it just makes you realize how trivial being young is, you know, and how fucking hell, dude, for all of you watching this, and even if you're young right now, and you're a college student right now, let's talk about love for a minute here. Do you remember that time you were so fucking madly in love with somebody you thought if you couldn't hear that person's voice that day, that the oxygen would just fucking leave your lungs and you would drop dead. You know how, like, fucking serious young love is, you know? And, like, now you look back at it and you're fucking cracking up. You're like, Jesus fucking Christ, what was I thinking there, right? Um, fuck. It's just... it. it it's so mind-boggling. And the older you get, the more knowledge you get, the more your body's broken down and your body breaks down more and more in this constant state of entropy to the point that when you finally figure out that you think you got it all figured out, 
you can't go live life and do the shit now that you've always wanted to do now that you got shit figured out because you're fucking crippled to shit. You know, it's, it's existence is a fucking sad, sad joke played on all of us. And we're all the butt of the joke and we all laugh at other people, but we all face the same thing. None of the shit I'm talking about right now is in this book. This is me just fucking shooting off the hip. Um, I can't believe I did that. That was even lamer than this whole fucking chat was. Okay, so anyway, back to pessimism. So, in pessimism one, the two big points here are, um, is could pessimism be hereditary? And when is it okay to produce children? Like, a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, people were thinking about having children and had children. And that was a scary time to have kids, you know? Like, there wasn't all the medicine we have now. There weren't all the vaccines we have now. People were dying during childbirth. Like, everything was crazy and everything was nuts. And we just think back and, like, if we had today all the problems that they had back then... Like, would we even, like, for a second consider having kids knowing what we know now? Probably fucking not. But now we feel like it's okay to have kids. Now we feel like, oh, you know, there's enough stuff. You know, the world might be an ugly place, but you know what? People are beautiful on the inside, God damn it, and all this other shit. But, like, 200 years from now... People are ha going to be having kids when they're 170 and shit, and they're going to be going, wow, I would never have had kids back in 2021. That shit was fucking crazy. Those people must have been nuts. So it's always better to have children when you're looking back on when you wouldn't have had children. So this whole thing comes back around to you. Why should you even do it in the first place? Is nature wanting all the pessimists to just fucking die off so the human race can continue to fucking procreate and continue to go? You know, like, when... And this isn't really said in here, but it the thought came across, like, if nature is somewhat conscious... And you would have to think that nature would have to be somewhat conscious in order to pass on a consciousness to us. Like, when you become a pessimist, are you on nature's shit list? Like, does nature sit there and... Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. And just go in like that because you're fucking up the game. You know, and then like, it's not in here either, but then like you're thinking, well, what about, um, homosexuality? Is nature going to be mad at homosexuality for fucking up nature's thing? Or is, um, homosexuality completely natural as some sort of population control? You know, like you just start thinking all these fucking thoughts, you know, like, it's it's just weird when you think about like all of the um like gay rights and civil rights and um the LGBTQ community. Um the LGBTQ community. Oh man, they really fucking missed a fucking one there. They could have just had some fucking word. That would have been great. Man, I'm all about name and shit. But anyway, um and, you know, there's people going, like, you know, like, just the whole idea about fighting for civil rights and all this shit, which people should fucking have anyway. Every fucking human should have every fucking right given to every other fucking human, no matter what. But, because of the difference, because the majority is like, well, um being gay and not procreating, that's wrong. So, 
does the gay community, and for anyone who's gay who watches this channel, please talk to me about this in the description because I'm very curious now. Um, do you ever think of yourself as being gay as a part of nature? Like, how do I say this? Because you know how, like, everyone's like, I was born this way, da -da 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 -da, which I'm full, I'm on board completely. But do you think the reason of being born that way is to help nature? Like, there's too many people on the planet, too many people like sucking up the resources. So we need to kind of quell this a little bit. So um, let's uh, 3%, let's move up to 11%. Um, this is nature thinking here, doing the math with their accountant, trying to come up with the best way to um, make sure life is sustainable. Or is that not at all something that ever crosses your mind. I think about shit like this all the fucking time. So, um, that, that's interesting. And again, that's not in this. This is me just like talking here. Um, but yeah, so that's what pessimism one's about. A lot of the talking points I want to have here is found in pessimism two. Um, let's see, what do I have? Why is there only one thing here? Oh, because I was going to run my mouth for a little bit. Well, train already left the station. Um, right now, um, in more modern times, like we'll say from like the 90s to present day, there are a lot of pessimistic philosophers who are kind of pushing this, um, this theory of heroic pessimism where we all know life is shit. We all know existence is futile. We all know that um, we have been plagued with a disease called consciousness, but we're going to make the best of it. We're going to try to make this life worth living so that in the future, people won't have to feel this way. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, that's a very optimistic vision of pessimism and, um, it creates its own paradox, you know? And so like that whole thing to me just seems a bit strange, a bit odd. Um, I don't know if I could sign up for that, but one of the people that, um, Ligotti speaks of who kind of feels this way, um, was uh, Camus. And the reason why, which it, it was so funny because um, he started talking about um, Camus' essay, uh, The Myth of Sisyphus, which I'm reading right now anyway. So I was just like, oh, wow, here we are. And um, if you don't know The Myth of Sisyphus, I'm not going to go into great detail on it, but he was cursed basically to roll this giant boulder up a hill to just have it fall down and him have to push it back up the hill for eternity and um Camus says that in his vision um he pictures Sisyphus happy in doing this because of the absurdity of it all now um if you don't know, Camus basically started um, absurdism as a movement. And um, the paradox here of being a pessimist and smiling during it because of its absurdity, I could, I could subscribe to that. It, 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 that could make sense to me because of just how fucking ludicrous it is um, that you just have to fucking laugh at it, you know? Um, you don't have to be, like, um, 
oh, my life's over, this sucks, I have to keep doing this. And you don't have to be like, I'm so excited that I get to push this fucking boulder up the mountain for the rest of eternity. But you could be pushing the boulder up and just fucking laugh to yourself like, what the fuck is going on? Because of the absurdity of it. Like that, I totally get that. Um, but um, the other people he mentioned in here, like... Uh, where, 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 where are these people? Um, Unamuno... Dienstag and Bracer. Okay, I am horrible at pronouncing names. So those are um, some of the philosophers he was talking about as far as like your more optimistic pessimists, um, especially more modern, we'll say. But the thing that really struck me that I really want to like dig into right here and I really think will um, speak to a lot of people. Um, and it might just be one of those things. Um, the last couple years, there's been a lot of death. Um, well, the last year, too, there's been a lot of death. And probably all of us sitting here right now have known at least one person, if not more, who have died over the last year. And some of us um, might even have known someone to commit suicide over the last year. And last night, um, Zoe and I found out of someone who we know who did that. And, um, it always leaves you with a weird feeling. It always does, no matter what. And I even wrote, um, a poem about it and put it up on my website today, um, about suicide. And the thing in here, let me see if I could just put this book down for a minute so I could just talk with my hands. I like talking with my hands. Um... One thing a lot of optimists, every time I say optimists, I want to say Optimus Prime because I'm an 80s kid and um, I watched a lot of cartoons. But most Optimus Prime um, want to always say about pessimists that um, pessimists are hypocrites because if they really felt the way they do, they would just kill themselves. And, um, that's not true. And it's not true for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is, is that just because you know something is shit doesn't mean that you're going to do those things. So like other examples that I could think of just off the top of my head is like, um, a doctor who smokes cigarettes a, uh, uh, I don't know, um, uh, fitness instructor eating a donut. Um, I don't know. Um, a white racist sleeping with a Mexican prostitute. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to like throw things out at you. Um, None of these things mean any other thing. Just because a doctor is smoking a cigarette, knowing the cigarette um, could kill him, doesn't mean that by him smoking that cigarette, he's any less of a doctor. Just because a, um, a fitness instructor is eating donuts, doesn't mean that person is any less of a fitness instructor. Okay? Um, and just like a white racist sleeping with a Hispanic prostitute doesn't make him any less racist, you know? Um, just because you think certain things and have beliefs in certain things, I mean, Jesus Christ, if you weren't allowed to be quote-unquote 
quote unquote hypocritical. I don't even think that's hypocritical. Just because you know something doesn't make you a hypocrite. Um, but like the entire Bible you'd have to throw out in Christianity. Cause like the whole thing about Christianity is that you're trying to be Christ-like. You're trying to live a life without sin, but the Bible tells you right in it that all men have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So what the fuck are you doing? So it's like, what's the fucking point at that point? But the thing that this book kind of brings up is that, like, if you saw a pessimist who was having a good time at a party, having drinks, having fun, laughing it up, and you're an optimist and you go up to that pessimist and say, why the fuck are you having a good time? That's not, that's not what you're like. Like, why would you do that? The pessimist would go, what the fuck are you talking about? Just because I think consciousness is a disease and existence is meaningless doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to have fun right now. Like, that's fucking ludicrous. But an optimist can, like, and very often, do, very often does, I don't know if that's correct, but an optimist who thinks everything's great all the time, that life is worth living and everything's great, could go into a depression and want to kill themselves. And no one ever bats an eye at that. No one ever says, oh, that optimist is a fucking hypocrite because right now they're depressed. Like, who the fuck would ever fucking say that? No one would say that. They would go, oh, shit, are you okay? And the other thing this points to is that, yes, there are probably have been many pessimists who have decided to end their life, who have committed suicide. But there's probably more optimists per capita who have committed suicide than pessimists. So what the fuck is that about? You know, like, when you think about it, geez, that's crazy. And... Um, I'm going to end the video here because my kids rides here and I got to go do dad stuff. So, um, you know, listen to the dogs bark and pick this book up. And tomorrow we are going to read the red tower. Is that right? The red tower. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.